Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. Today we're going to be taking a brief look at Nikon's new D750. Now, in keeping with our new trend of having more videos, I am just going to kind of give you guys a brief look at this and then later on we'll look at it in more detail. The D750 is yet another full frame camera from Nikon, which I think is an awesome thing. Initially, a lot of people thought that this camera was going to be kind of like a miniature D4S and the state that it would be about 8 frames a second and 24 megapixels. As it turns out, that's not exactly what this camera is. It is more of a camera that's more like the 610, and I believe that this camera will end up replacing the 610 at some point. <clears throat> Over the previous models, the biggest things that we see here is a difference. Number one, we see that we get a new version of Nikon's 51 point autofocus system. And this is actually the Multicam 3500 version two. So this actually is a different focus system than what we have in the D4S and the D810. So it's actually the next level of evolution. We also have a new movable screen that I'll show you guys up close in a moment. And we have Wi-Fi built in as well, which I think is an awesome thing. So Nikon, in my opinion, they've kind of really outdone themselves with the feature set on this camera. It's nice to see them put Wi-Fi built in and a movable screen on a camera that's a little bit higher in. You know, we have, a, we have a cameras like the D5300 that give us those features, but like I say, you know, we've never had that type of feature set on any of Nikon's higher end bodies. So this is something that I consider to be a very, very good thing. And we also have um, a little bit faster speed. You know, it's not eight frames a second like a lot of initial rumors thought it would be, but it is six and a half frames a second, which is definitely not by any means to be considered slow. Um, if you're shooting at the full resolution on something like a Nikon D810, you'll only get five frames a second. So at six and a half, you know, this is, this is a very, very good camera. You know, six and a half is not gonna be nearly as fast as something like the uh, new Canon 7D Mark II that we'll be looking at soon, which does like 10 frames a second. And it's not as fast as something like an A77 Mark II, but both of those are crop sensor cameras. So this is something that, it's something that's very, very nice to see at a camera at this point. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at this camera closer in detail. Taking a closer look at this camera, the first thing that stood out to me was the ergonomics. This camera has an extremely deep grip. If you guys take a look at that there, you can see how They've actually taken the battery compartment here, which by the way, it is the same battery as a D810 and D800 and um, all the other models in that range. So it is the ENEO 15 type battery. You'll get about 1200 shots per charge out of this battery. But the thing that's interesting is they've taken this battery and they've moved it in here and it's actually sideways now because the camera body itself is so thin right here. If we look at something like the D600 that I have to reach way up frame for, you'll notice that it's much larger through here, which leaves a lot less room for grip. But this camera, I mean, that's just incredible. This is probably the best feeling Nikon grip to date. Um, this, is, this is an extremely, extremely good feeling camera in hand. The other thing I like about this camera is that Nikon has actually decided to finally, as I just mentioned, give us a movable screen on a camera at this level. And a lot of people have been turned off by this already so far because they're used to cameras at this range I even had someone tell me that they felt that this cheapened the camera. Um, I disagree with that. This is a very, very well thought out design. I think it's put together nicely. I do wish that it were of the, uh, you know, folding and swiveling varieties. But other than that, I think that it's very, very well designed. It is the newer, higher resolution screen. So it's, you know, the same 1.3 million dots or whatever that's on the uh, D810. So that's very, very nice. We've got an info button up here. And we actually have a second info button to be able to come in here and select things. I'm going to explore this further in another video. 
I have very, very limited time with this camera this time. So I haven't had a chance to really delve into it like I would like to. I have already noticed that if you are shooting on manual and you're in video, it is possible now, we'll run that shutter speed down a bit. It is possible now to have full-time control over your f-stop and not have to exit live view. So we do have power aperture on this, so that is awesome. I do like the ability to do that. Um, over on this side, <clears throat> the ports are very, very similar to what we have on other Nikon bodies. We've got our remote jack, and then our microphone and headphone, and then we have the USB and HDMI. The only thing I don't like here is that it's a proprietary USB, whereas on the 600 and 610, we had a standard mini USB connection. So, just something that I noticed. <clears throat> I am going to be exploring this camera in a lot more detail in coming videos. Um, you can see, of course, dual card slots there. So nothing has changed in that aspect. <clears throat> I will be exploring this a lot more in another video. Um, I definitely, definitely look forward to shooting with this camera. <clears throat> the other thing I noticed is the quiet mode while the, uh, while the D810 uh, is somehow miraculously extremely quiet, this camera is not quite as quiet as that one. So it still is more of a traditional sounding Nikon shutter. Not really sure what they did to the 810 to make it so quiet. Uh, they didn't do it to this camera, but not, not really a big deal. Just something to, you know, worth mentioning. The autofocus system on this camera, as I mentioned, is very similar as well. You do have the new group AF also on this camera. And of course we get all the video capabilities of the newer models too. We do have the ability, let's see, I'll show you guys that real fast. We do have the ability to go in here and shoot at 60 frames a second in 1080p, as you can see, thanks to the newer XP processor. So all those capabilities are there. <clears throat> the only thing that, the only thing that I'm kind of interested to see on to, to see how it works is the uh, is the 51 point focusing system in this one. As I mentioned, it is a different focus system. So I don't know exactly how it's going to compare to the one found in the D810 and, and D4S, but that is something that we're going to be exploring in a future video. If there's anything else you guys would like to see about this camera, uh, definitely write me in the comments below and I will uh, show you guys that in a follow-up video. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith signing off.